So 2K19's been out for about a month now. You'd think a game that's been out for a month, yo, like, it's probably smooth sailing, all the glitches in the butt. Still in the game. It's still in the game. First things first, let's talk about Pro-Am. Uh, there was literally one thing added to Pro-Am from 2K18 to 2K19. It was private matchmaking, which doesn't work. It doesn't work, guys. It was the one thing added, and it currently does not work. You can spend hours and hours trying to get people in the lobby, and you will fail miserably. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not know about you guys, but I don't want to waste two hours, three hours trying to figure out how to add somebody into the lobby just so I can play my game. So a lot of people, of course, are resorting to matching up the same way they did in 2K18. They're just going three, two, one, X, 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 and then they match up that way. Sucks, right? The one thing that's supposed to work doesn't work. You think like, yo, the 2K League exists. Pro-Am is the esports game mode. Shouldn't it have some sort of priority? Like, when we gonna up update this thing? What is the problem? Do they not have enough staff? I know a solution. Hire some. You literally have so much extra money every year at 2K. You, you, you make us pay a lot of microtransactions. And I would like to think that a lot of that money goes to making the game better. So that's not an excuse. Like, they literally have every resource. Just, I'm trying to think of a reason why it hasn't been fixed yet. You have the brightest minds in the gaming industry working on this issue right here. And that's finding a way to get a private matchmaking to work, ladies and gentlemen. Every game has private matchmaking. 2K had private matchmaking for a very long time. Private matchmaking team up. You could just match up with your friends, invite them to a lobby and play a game. So I'm struggling to understand and I, maybe it's way too complex for me to understand why it hasn't been fixed yet. So let's give that some sort of priority because people have been asking me, Agent, when are you coming out with them Prime videos? Listen, I really enjoy playing Prime in 2K18 and I really want to do it again in 2K19, but I need that to work first. There's a lot more issues than just the private matchmaking. That's just the main one everybody's been talking about. Do you guys remember in 2K18 when, like, if you were in the West Coast, your buddy in the East Coast couldn't play with you? Couldn't play with or against you, for that matter. It was a massive issue, and it took around one or two months to fix even back then. I don't know what the problem is, man. When there's a VC glitch, bro, 2K patches that shit up in an instant because it hurts their bad. But when it comes to Pro-Am and, and, and just the ability for the game mode in, in and of itself to work, why does that take two months to fix? And it'd be nice if we can get some sort of update because nobody's heard anything about Pro-Am. Like, we don't know if they're close to a fix, if they're far from a fix, if they got one the patch for is already sent out. We have no idea. So that was the first thing. The second thing, 2K, your service is ass. Pretty much every single park event, there's something going wrong with the servers. And it's, it's killing it because the park event, the rotations, when it works, it's really fun. But it's almost always lagging. And today the servers crashed and it wasn't no regular crash. It was like, you couldn't play my career type crash. You couldn't do nothing. You couldn't even play play now type crash. The whole thing went down. You would hop in, in the park and in five, 10 seconds, you get lagged out. And nobody knows why it's happening, but here's what I heard. Park rep was being reset. Park records are being reset. Overalls are being reset. So immediately I turned off my PS4. I said, I don't want no part of that. My guy iPod hit me up, said, Joe, I wouldn't mind resetting my record. <laughs> I'm like, nah, I'm not trying to take no risks, ladies and gentlemen, I'm offline today. We need the servers to do better. And I know it's like, just, just, just think about this. I forgot where I seen it. It might've been on Reddit, but somebody was like, isn't it kind of sad that 2K has been having the same server issues for over a decade? If you played like 2K10, same problems existed. And you think that with time and technological improvements that you would find a way to make the, the servers better so you wouldn't have to deal with all these issues, but no. That's not the case at all. One of the issues the servers have brought to me, same issue I dealt with in 2K18 is variable latency. Now, it's one thing if the servers are low latency one day, high the next day, low the next day, mid the next day. I could deal with that. I have jump shots for every occasion. But here's what 2K has been doing the last four days to me. You hop in a game and you know it's low latency because you just played a warm up. And so you put on your low latency jump shot and then in the middle of the game, it jumps from high to low to mid to high to low. And if you're pulling up for a shot in high latency with the low latency jump shot, it will never hit. My jump shots are designed to snap into the green window, but when you add an extra buffer or you reduce the buffer with higher or lower latency, it will miss. So it's put me in quite the dilemma because I'm putting on jump shots that only work some of the time. And I never really know when or when it doesn't work because there's no ping number on the top. And if you guys watch my channel and you remember why I stopped playing Park in 2K18, part of it was it was gray, boring, dry, and nobody wanted to play that shit. This, the second and most important part for me was that I was having the same problem. And I didn't have it the first few months. The first few months I was fine, but then it started to happen. And for 2K19, for me right now, it's starting to happen again. 
I like to pride myself in being a very good problem solver. So I put myself to the task. I said, agent, how do I solve this problem? I tried <clears throat> everything you could imagine. I currently have a $2,500 monitor sitting behind me right now. It's not that, you know, my controller, I try changing controllers, HDMI cords. I have two internet connections in my house. One gigabyte download speed. So it's not the speed, it's not the internet. I tried switching ethernet cords. Just think of a solution and I've tried it. I've come down to this one thing. If this one thing doesn't work, then I don't know. This entire time, I've been trying to reduce my latency so I always play on low. I told you guys, Base 49 with Curry as a release one and Curry as a release two is the greatest jump shot in the game, but it only works in low latency. And I rarely ever get that because I have big crowds around me and it increases the latency. So I was trying to reduce it, but that's not the fix. The fix for me is using a VPN. If you don't know what a VPN is, it basically reroutes your internet through a proxy so my connection doesn't directly go to the 2K servers. My connection goes to the VPN and then the 2K servers. You might think, agent, shouldn't that add latency to your connection? Yes. If I can add enough latency to my connection, I'll never have to worry about dipping to low latency. And so if I'm always on high latency, I can just equip the same jump shot and I'll be fine. That's, that's literally the only fix I could think of. I'm waiting for my switch over cable from Amazon to show up and I'm gonna hook up my PS4 with a VPN today and check it out. Cause if that doesn't work, I'll just do what I did last year. Let's go back to Prime, ladies and gentlemen. The second they get that shit fixed, I'm going back. Cause in Prime, I never really had that problem. It's only on the park. Now I hit up Mike Wang and I was like, bro, Mike, there has to be a way to either show us the ping number on the top so I know what I'm dealing with, or, or two, give, give me an ability, please, to make everything outside of the game I'm playing in the park invisible. While I'm playing a park game, I do not need to load everybody on the sideline. That is not important to me, but I have to. And because the PS4 is such an outdated old piece of shit hardware, and I, I'd much rather prefer to be PC gaming. I'm a PC gamer now, ladies and gentlemen. Only game I play on the console is 2K. Because the software is so horrible on that shit, it, it takes like, and then the, the connection on the servers, it can't handle all the shit, and it, then, it, then it starts to jump up and down from high or low. So if you deal with that issue, because I know not everyone does, but some people do, and you're having problems with it's very responsive, and then it goes sluggish, like you're running through molasses. And then it's very responsive, molasses. Responsive, molasses. If you're dealing with that, try that fix. I'm going to let you know how it turns out for me, ladies and gentlemen. It should work. I can't see why it wouldn't work. A VPN is guaranteed to add latency, so we'll see how it goes. That's not the only issue. Okay, let's say that you're a 2K player, you bought the game, $60, boom. You wanna upgrade your player, you're not gonna grind from a 60 overall. Are you a lunatic? So you spend $50 on your player. All right, so you got him up to an 85 overall. Now, you have to walk into the Gatorade store. The second you get into the Gatorade store, you realize they're playing some E-Rape. Garbage ass EDM screamo electric guitar music, ladies and gentlemen, and I cannot handle it. And the music is so loud, it makes me lose millions and millions of brain cells a second. But I have to go in there and go on the treadmill three times so I can get my Gatorade boots. Then I go to that little bitch on the counter. The guy on the counter, I have to spend a thousand VC per game to get my Gatorades from that guy. Now, I got, I'm Gatorated up at this point, I have to go to the bitch outside. You know the, the bitch with the boost? I gotta talk to her now. When I talk to her, I spend 1,000 VC per game getting all my boosts, and now I'm set. 1,000 VC per game on the Gatorades, and then now on the boost, and I'm spending 2,000 VC per game. I'm 85 overall, I'm grinding, I'm grinding, I'm grinding. I'm spending all this money on the game. It most definitely is not sustainable. Then you hit 91 overall, 92 overall. And you realize like, yo, I just unlocked a scooter and a megaphone, whatever. I have to spend 50 additional dollars, ladies and gentlemen, to, uh, to unlock that shit. Even though my prize for getting 92 overall was a megaphone, I have to spend $50 to get it. Okay, so you buy the $50, you get up to 93, you get yourself a bike, 94, 95, 96, then you get up to 98, ladies and gentlemen. And nobody's hit 98 just yet. I think Jay Fox right now is leading the league in top rep. So we'll find out hopefully in a day or two how much mascots cost. But come to find out if it's like 500,000, they got mascots for every team. It seems like instead of rewarding you for playing the game a lot, you're the one being punished the most because you have to spend the most money on the game. When people see my name on the park, they're not just coming in all willy-dilly. They're going to the Gatorade store, getting all their boosts. They're going to the bitch with the boost. They're grabbing all of that, and they're coming prepared. And because I don't want to spend all of that in the game, I'm at a massive disadvantage every single game I play. Do you guys, do you guys see my dilemma now? People are looking to drop me off, so people want to come prepare because they want to say they beat Agent. But because I don't want to spend 2,000 VC per game, I'm at a massive, can you just think about it? Plus five to every attribute? Just think about it. That's crazy. Come on, yo, that's, oh my God. 
But luckily for you, I have a fix. Now, 2K would never remove these stuff because they're a money-making machine and nobody really cares except me, apparently, and so they keep the stuff in the game. Now, what if 2K did this? Do you guys remember in 2K16 when they had park cards and uh, people knew when you equipped a park card and they used to call you a bitch for doing it, right? Uh, not, not half, entire whole bitch for doing it. What if when people applied boosts or put on the Gatorade stuff, they, that I could see that they did that, so I can be like, you came on with all those upgrades, 2000 VC, and you still lost your trash. And unlike 2K18, ladies and gentlemen, I can talk shit to the other team this year. And so I'll, you, you will not hear the end of it from me. If you come on all prepared, looking all try hard with your seven foot stretch big and your 6'3 pure shot creator with your Hall of Fame brick wall screens from a pure glass cleaner and you still find a way to lose the game, you will not hear the end of it. I think that's a pretty good solution. Because the reason people didn't use park cards a lot and it happened on occasion, but is because you were shamed for doing it, right? Here's what I learned in sociology. A lot of it was nonsense bullshit and I had to take it because I needed a humanities credit, right? But here's one thing I learned. One of the greatest motivating factors for human beings is shame. When you're ashamed of something, you'll almost do anything to stop being ashamed of that thing. That's why a lot of people be getting like plastic surgery and shit is because they don't feel comfortable with their body. And that is not, why am I, this is not social or political commentary, ladies and gentlemen. All I'm saying is if 2K allows us to see who's coming on with all those upgrades, then people will feel anxious, almost shamed into not using it, because if they do use it, they're a whole bitch. You see where I'm going with this, ladies and gentlemen? In this arc of a story, you're spending money on the game, and that doesn't even include any additional players you want to buy for another $50 if you want to upgrade them to an 85 right away. By the time you finish playing the game, if you're a good, hardcore, try-hard player, you're spending thousands of dollars on the game. One game you're spending $1,000 on. I mean, I heard of some of my team guys who spent over $10,000. There was one guy I heard spend 30,000. And I couldn't believe it, ladies and gentlemen. Like, man, I get it. Microtransactions are in the game, and there's a term for these people that spend a lot of money on the game, it's called sharks. And, and gaming developers love these people, especially on mobile apps and free-to-play apps where they have a ton of microtransactions. You'd think that in a $60 game, we wouldn't have to deal with all of this. You'd think 2K launched for free, the types of microtransactions they put in the game. Like if I went to someone, I said like, yo, you have to pay 50 to get him to an 85 and then all these Gatorade boosts and, 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 and jump shot boosts, you can, you can boost your player to oblivion and you can continue to spend microtransactions to get an upper hand on other people. And I, I could easily convince somebody that it was a free to play game if they didn't know what the game title was and how much it cost. All right, so let's recap. First, Pro-Am, let's fix that. Two, servers, we gotta fix that. And three, microtransactions, can we chill on that? I put out a tweet a few weeks ago saying like 2K19 had a lot of potential. I can tell you guys right now, I already played more park games on 2K16 than I did on the entirety of 2K18. I'm having fun. Through all the glitches and the bugs and the problems, I'm having fun. I'm also raging a little bit because there is some issues that make me want to break $2,500 monitors like that. But I'm not going to summit 1G the situation, ladies and gentlemen. I refuse to do that. 2K. This game can be one of the greatest 2Ks of all time. You just have to execute now, all right? A month into the game's launch and it's looking ugly, all right? There's still massive problems with massive game modes that should be prioritized. And we need to do good, we need to, we need to really work hard to fix this. You have all the resources in the world and there's really no reason we should ever be having to deal with a situation like this. Ideally, the game should come out with all of these situations solved, right? If you had good game testers. I don't know who these game testers are, but you need to fire them and grab a whole new team of game testers that actually know how to do the job properly. And get them out early so they can fix the game and break the game so you can fix the game. And they'll break it more and find this glitch and you'll fix it before the game comes out so we won't have to deal with more invisible players or more people doing inbound glitches, right? I'll leave it on that. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, click on one of these two videos, and I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. This was my fourth take because I kept forgetting to turn the mic on. I'm out. Peace.